Hello everyone. Welcome to civil engineering and stuff. And in today's topic, we are going to discuss about harbor engineering. So in this lecture, uh, we are going to discuss very basic uh, terminology related to harbors and their use. And uh, this, basically, this is a two part video lecture in which the first part is dedicated towards the technical terms related to the harbor engineering. And the second part will be related to the navigation aids that ensures that the ship follows a specific route. All right. So let's start with this uh, topic. So first of all, let uh, we know like the water transportation is one of the cheapest and the oldest mode of transportation compared to the conventional modes of transportation. Like we have, we have the airways, right? We have the airways, we have railways and in a similar way, we have roadways. We have roadways so these are what we call as the one uh, the most commonly used mode of transportations right you on your, in your daily life follow the roads to reach from uh, from the origin to your destination likewise when the distance is higher you go for railways and again if the distance is much higher and you want to cover the distance in a shortest time you follow the airways but there is a uh, there is a kind of a restriction attached with uh, all these mode of transportation. If you can visualize like for construction of road, we need a huge amount of investment, right? <clears throat> There's a very irregular topography or uh, different uh, geographical areas, right? So in that a uh, lot of work is a uh, lot of work goes to construct the road network. Similarly, uh, the case is uh, applicable for railways and airways. We need huge amount of investment to to only to construct the track in which the specific uh, facility can be used. Right for airports, for airways, we need to construct the airports. And again, a whole uh, planning of selection of the geographical region where this airport need to be constructed and other parameters are considered for that but this is not uh, in the case of uh, water transportation we have a huge water uh, available throughout the world right we have oceans we have seas that extend uh, throughout the world so on and all we uh, this water act as a natural track we do need not to construct a natural track like the other conventional mode of transportation like roadways railways and airways we already have a natural track uh, and in this natural track, only thing, only thing that we have to manage is that, we, that we have to ensure that our ships that are used for the motor transportation reach from point A to point B, that is from origin to destination safely. That is all we have to take care about. We have been laid down with the natural track, right? The water act is a natural track. So comparatively, uh, uh, less amount of capital investment is required compared to the conventional modes of uh, transportations, right? Plus, uh, like in water transportation, the resistance that we have uh, compared to the uh, airports, railways and uh, roadways uh, is fairly less. Right. So this water transportation is also used uh, for for transporting the uh, heavy bulky goods. Right. These uh, like all the cargo ships uh, are used, uh, use the water water as a mode of transportation because like the, there is not much resistance. In fact, the if if properly planned, the waves act as a as a pushing uh, phenomena to like to to allow the ships to move from point A to point B, right? So only thing that we have to take care about is that the the these ship reach from point A to point B in a very a very in a safe uh, safe and a in a timely manner, right? And for that, what is what we use harbor, right? So uh, talking about the harbor, first of all, let me discuss a basic difference between a port and a harbor. So if you if I tell you a ship has arrived at a port, you will very well visualize that there is a ship that is arriving at the port. Likewise, if I uh, say the term harbor, you again uh, think that yes, there, there is some uh, some structure and like, uh, yes, there, there, there is a place where ship arrives. Right. So what is the difference between a port and a harbor? The basic difference and the most important difference is that <clears throat> your port is it act as a terminal facility used for loading and unloading of the passengers as well as the cargoes. While this is not the case with the harbor harbor, the sole purpose of harbor is to provide safety to the 
ongoing mo uh, movement of the ships right the your harbor act as a sheltered area in this in the sea that uh, ensures that the sh uh, the ship can take in an intermediate or a final rest right and in case some repairment is required some uh, the driver need to take a break so for that purpose only your harbor is provided right so uh, while your port deals with the commercial aspect like loading and unloading of the cargoes takes place in on a port the sheltering of the ship takes place at the harbor right uh, let's say there is a ship that is moving from uh, moving from point a to point b which is let's say uh, one one lakh kilometers far right so in between the duration let's say there, there is a warning of sea there is a warning of storm right so if this is the uh, in uh, and the ship is in between its route so at that point of time this ship requires to take a shelter so the place where the shelter will be provided is what we call as the harbor while the ship will be reaching at point b right from a there is there is a loading of the of the cargo and the passenger is there and at point b there is uh, there will be unloading of the cargo as well as the passengers so this where the all these this commercial activity takes place this loading unloading of, of the goods take place that is what we uh, call as the port right so a port can also act as a harbor of course uh, a port will also be provided with the facilities by where the ship can take shelter right the ship can take shelter as well as uh, that port will provide safety as well as the facilities uh, for the repairment uh, for the for the ship right so a port can be a harbor but a harbor cannot be a port the if i if i'm saying that uh, right now i'm staying at a harbor a uh, harbor located at a this means i'm taking a shelter right or i'm taking a break from my overall journey right while in port uh, the main uh, idea of the port is that there there will be a, com a commercial exchange of of the things that will take place all right so your uh, if uh, if i further want to uh, bifurcate this point a port will be a commercial loading place for the ship while the harbor will be used for the safety or mooring of the of the sea vessel mooring is again a partial shelter that is provided in between the route okay and uh, ports provide a vast number of facilities for commercial cargo trade and industry while this is not there in the uh, harbor harbor is just for uh, for the shelter of the uh, sea vessels all right same points like i'm just bifurcating these points into num uh, same definition into number of points right and uh, since there will be loading and unloading of the goods so from there the goods will be transported to the respective destination so uh, a port will be attached with a rail rail and road connection connectivity while this is not the case with the harbor just like i discussed your harbor is a place that is just used for sheltering right so it may or may not have a facility for of a nearby railroad right uh, because there the unloading and loading of the good is not the major purpose it may take uh, a few uh, people can uh, ride the boat or like few uh, intermediate exchange of goods of small quantity can take place but that is not the sole purpose the sole purpose of harbor is to give shelter right so it may or may not have a very good connectivity that's not not the not, not the main requirement while for port it is an an, an important requirement that the a port will be located where there will be a good connectivity of rail and uh, road network because from there once the deloading of the good is has been done the good will be transported to the various part of of that locations via these modes of transportation right and your port uh, uh, in your port large containers are required to load and store for the for of the commercial good and this is not generally used for cargo containers and storage facilities required of course loading and unloading will take place so of course you need to have a facility to to have a temporary uh, storage facility available in, in on the port while harbor again you don't need to have that because loading and unloading is not the purpose of the harbor the purpose of the harbor is to give shelter to the ship and since loading and unloading storage facilities are there uh, are the multi, are the main requirement of the port so the employees uh, well trained employees are 
deployed on the port so as to ensure that the goods are uh, loaded or unloaded safely while uh, on the harbor only recreational facilities entertainment ho uh, hotels or uh, water sports are there because it's a like uh, it's a uh, break between it can be used for as a break between the journey right so just for the entertainment purposes are the uh, main thing that are required in the harbor Ports attract more workers and trained personals in the various aspects of shipping and cargo, while harbors have trained personals, but at the same time, recreational facilities, uh, holiday makers, and private ship owners are what mainly found in the harbor. Same points written in different way, right? So suppose in your exam, a question come, what is the difference between port and harbor? Just so as to have variety of points. That's why uh, the same thing is discussed. The main definition you should remember right the main thing is that harbor is used for sheltering for commercial purposes uh, a port is used a port can be a harbor but a harbor cannot be a port okay an example is shown here so if you look into the into these two images which one will be port which one will be harbor just take a minute and think about it which one will you will call it as a port and which will you will call it as a harbor so this is what we call as the harbor. This is what we call as the port. You see here, all the ships have been given a facility to take shelter. Here, the ships are doing nothing but taking shelter. While if you see here, like a, there is a lo uh, there is a loading of the cargo, deloading of the car cargo is taking place, right? And if you uh, so this is what we call as the port. Right. And if you look here, here the sheltering of the ship is is there. Right. So this port is also acting as a harbor. But here only harbor facility is available. All right. So talking about uh, the type of harbors, we have natural harbors, semi natural harbors and artificial harbors. Let's discuss about each in detail. When we have a natural topography available to us that ensures these the safety of the ships in case we have a natural topography where the current of the water does not reach to the shore with that in intensity that would have been at at the major part of the sea because of the natural topography of the area right the uh, the waves uh, this natural topography is such that it provides a shelter facility to the ship when such kind of natural topography is available to us then it is called as the harbor right and since uh, the we have a natural facility that act as a harbor so of course uh, we need not to say that uh, sooner or longer there will be accumulation of uh, of population all around right because ships keep on coming for, to take shelter so of course uh, there will be uh, people on this ship um, that may be tourists that may be the workers on the ship that require some place to take rest so who rules will be there they will require some place to get entertained so so small uh, small uh, gaming parlors might be there some uh, some restaurants might open right so sooner or later the population starts to grow along this harbor Talking about India, Bombay and Kandals are what we call as the natural harbor. They have the natural topography that supports uh, safe shelter to the ships and that's why it is uh, used for the harbor purposing. Then we have semi-natural harbors and in case one side of the uh, of uh, at one side we have a natural topography that provides a certain kind of safety, right? So on the other side, an artificial construction is done you see here in one side we have enough valley that ensures like if the water current is so high here right so by the time it reaches this part or this part of the uh, of this portion of the valley the current subsides right the current com uh, becomes calm right so the other side of this facility uh, in, at the other side of this natural topography man-made construction is done so as to further reduce the movement or further reduce the intensity of the current of the water and when when we have this kind of phenomena that is we have the natural topography available and on and uh, some partial man-made structure is created so as to ensure more safety or the 
increase the uh, safety phenomena and provide the, the accurate facilities. When this happens, this is what we call as the semi-natural harbor, right? This is what we call as the semi-natural harbor. Then we have uh, the artificial harbor. And of course, by this time, you can very well guess what is an artificial harbor. An arti artificial harbor is that uh, when everything is man-made, right? When all when a natural when when a harbor is constructed through artificial means, so by, by proper planning, then we call uh, it as an artificial harbor. When when do we go for artificial harbor? Again, taking an example to go from from point A to point B, right? You are, uh, you have to go from point point A to point B via C, right? You have to go from point A to point B via C. Now. It, there is a frequent tendency like let's say it takes uh, let's say it takes one month it takes one month to reach from point a to point b likewise from point b to point a and there is a, a frequent occurrence of storm like uh, in between there is a let's say after every 20 minute, 20 days there is a there is a uh, frequent phenomena that uh, high tides occur right or uh, there is a heavy winds that occur but a to B is a very, very good commercial route, right? Uh, it's a, such a good, uh, com it's a most followed or shortest path available. And uh, like if we use uh, this route, our uh, the pro profit margin will increase, right? So in such a scenario, like where, where uh, the route is shortest and can be used to its maximum. In that scenario, what we do is uh, where we construct the artificial harbor, right? We construct a facility in between uh, the uh, in between the route so as to provide a shelter to the ships. Because on and all, the route is uh, is used by many, right? Or it is a desire of many uh, many sailors that yes, if we can get this route, like we uh, like the we can reach uh, this destination in a shortest period of time, which will consume less fuel and uh, like provide provide a better facility. So if this is the scenario, then then we, uh, an artificial harbor is is constructed. So uh, when we go uh, when do we go for artificial harbors? For the first thing first thing is that the requirement is high, right? This route is being followed by uh, is this is the shortest route available between two destinations, and uh, it's, it has a very good commercial importance, right? Apart from that. At the same time, we also look for the cheap availability of land as well as the construction material, right? So, um, like the industry is also nearby. By nearby, uh, we mean that within 30, 40, or even 100 kilometers, right? Based upon the commercial importance of, of the route, right? Or everything is based upon the commercial importance as, as well as the duration of the journey, right? If you if you would have followed another route using uh, C D E F, and it would it would have taken let's say six months. It would have taken six months to reach from point A to point B using this A, C, D, E, F route, right? So, of course, then compared to this, like this is much better, right? And like this construction of harbor is a one time investment, then of course, a maintenance is required, but then things keep growing from time to time, right? So, if this is the scenario, then we go for uh, the construction of artificial harbor, we go, we, or we all look for cheap land and the availability of construction materials we look for transportation and communication facilities we look for uh, we definitely look for some kind of natural protection from wind and waves uh, if that is available that will be good but if not uh, if the industrial element uh, is higher then more sophistication of, of the construction of artificial harbor needed we look for traffic potential that is the uh, the number of cargoes or the frequency of cargo cargoes that goes from um, in between the route, availability of electricity and fresh water, uh, favorable marine conditions, and defense and strategical aspect. These are again few of the important points that we consider while going for the construction of artificial harbor. Okay, so these are the three type of harbors that we have. We have natural harbor, we have semi-natural, and we have artificial harbor. Okay. So once we have constructed harbor, so of course we need some uh, some other uh, const construction work that ensures the ship, uh, safety of the ships as well as the uh, safety of the harbor area. Okay, in that the first one is what we are going to discuss is what we call as the breakwaters. Okay, breakwaters. Now breakwater is a is a is 
a protective barrier right it is a protective barrier that encloses harbor and keep harbor water and ship unaffected by the heavy and strong sea waves just like we have discussed the whole and sole purpose of harbor is to protect the ships to give shelter to the ships right so uh, let's say we have huge current that is uh, that flows in a specific time duration right and in that time the harbor need uh, harbor is required so uh, we we construct a breakwater right we construct a breakwater and a breakwater this protective barrier uh, breakwater is nothing but a protective barrier that obstructs the uh, the heavy movement of the current of the sea or the ocean okay and this uh, you can see very well in uh, the in in this pic like here you can see some ripples that are there in the water but beyond breakwater there is the water seems to be very calm and composed correct you can see the ripples here at this side of the breakwater while here the water is very calm and composed right so that is what the role of breakwater is it's a it is a, a protective barrier that uh, shelters the ships and, and the harbors that are there in the in and the harbor uh, where where the ships are parked uh, from the heavy currents it breaks the uh, the movement of the current and ensures that there is the, the there is a calmness in the water right and uh, like for the in terms of construction purposes it is desirable to avoid straight parallel or diverging arms right uh, having a straight arm like the uh, if we have a straight uh, protective barrier if we have a, a straight backwater then what will happen is the impact of these heavy tides will be very severe and because of which the breakwater will require frequent uh, maintenance in the, in the same way if we have parallel arms if we have parallel arms again the purpose uh, of constructing a breakwater diminishes or the cost of construction will be very high right in the similar way if we have a diverging arm in if we have diverging arms then again uh, the purpose is nullified you can see that uh, you can very well imagine that the uh, tides uh, the high tides will come with full intensity and will strike the harbor right uh, like and uh, destroying the whole and sole purpose of con of constructing a breakwater as well as constructing a harbor so it is a desirable phenomena to construct a, a converging arm right having a converging arm so that first of all the uh, whole whole of the uh, high tides cannot cannot uh, come with full intensity and rest the in, uh, strikes with, strikes the uh, arms of the breakwater and like they they the intensity is reduced right so generally a good alignment of breakwater is to have a straight converging arms so that the angle of intersection does not exceed 60% okay now this breakwater uh, this breakwater structure can be constructed in num in number of ways we can have a heap or mound mound uh, breakwater we can have upright wall uh, breakwater sorry this should be this should be breakwater and then we have mound and superstructure right mound and superstructure breakwater okay mound and structure structure breakwater okay now let us discuss about each of these three so first of all we have heap or mound breaker breakwater okay so here uh, like the uh, construction is uh, somewhat limited like there is not much technicality involved we construct uh, uh, like you, uh, you can see here this is a straight a breakwater right it's a, these are straight break, breakwater structures and the reason for constructing these straight breakwater structure is that uh, generally the uh, intensity of tide would would not be that high that it uh, impacts the breakwater so uh, here the straight breakwater has been constructed and the uh, like we have uh, interior structure and the outer structure is covered with rubbles right the outer structure is covered with huge blocks of of stones right huge bulky weight artificial or uh, natural blocks are used to cover this interior structure right if uh, if i want to show you that this is the interior structure of breakwater right this is the interior structure of breakwater and the outer exterior is 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 covered with 
huge bulky stone that can be artificial or man made sorry artificial and natural depending upon the availability of resource and the requirement right so these heavy bulky stone what they do is they they protect this interior structure okay they protect this interior structure from from getting eroded all right so what happens is that the uh, water comes they strike these uh, these huge bulky stones and then revert back okay these have that amount of uh, strength and in a uh, durability that they are they are able to uh, resist successfully the heavy impact of wave that strikes these stones okay this is uh, this picture can same be seen here this is the interior part if you see this is the interior part this is the exterior part right so when this kind of structure is used this is called as heap or mound breakwater right we have heap of strong stones that is covering our breakwater structure okay then we have upright wall breaker now upright wall breaker is a much more uh, like technically a very well constructed structure right more technicalities involved while constructing a uh, upright wall breaker right and uh, as the name suggest it is a vertical wall that is constructed right it's a vertical wall that is uh, constructed to resist the force of the of the water or the waves right and uh, uh, of course uh, since it's a straight structure so the impact of the waves will be very severe over these over the surface so that is why like uh, there is a good technicality that is involved uh, for the construction of uh, these upright wall breakers and again these are also used uh, or preferred to be used in the areas where the frequency of st uh, striking the waves is not that uh, high or uh, like we need to have a more precise form of construction in that case also we go for the upright wall breaker structures right and uh, and the quality of the work is very very high right a very superior quality of work is required good quality stones are used uh, high strength uh, concrete is uh, is uh, formed and then the uh, upright wall breakers are constructed then we have mound with superstructure so this is a more technically advanced uh, than the upright wall breaker structures here uh, what we do is uh, we have we have the uh, breakwater structures covered with the strong stones and um, along with that we construct some form of superstructures in that superstructures by superstructure we mean we provide uh, like uh, more facilities are provided in these kind of breakwaters by facilities what we mean like the uh, the central part may be more widened for the movement of of the public likewise uh, they uh, the high intensity waves can be used to generate electricity so what does we mean is let's say they, this is the opening here so the waves comes so wave uh, during high tides uh, fre uh, if frequency high tide is very high so the waves will go through it and uh, inside it we will have a turbine attached to it right we will have a turbine that is attached to it and as the uh, like this opening directs the flow of the water and the 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 water will strike the blades of the turbine which will lead to movement of the turbine and thus producing the electricity right so this is your um, uh, mound with superstructure breakwater the construction wise is it's, um, it's more sophisticated and well designed right lot of facility is it, it, it uh, there is an attempt to provide lot of facilities in this kind of uh, breakwater structure all right <clears throat> so this was about the breakwater then we have valves well uh, valves are another uh, another form of construction in the harbors and the role of valves is to provide the landing platform for the ship okay so uh, in case uh, like once the ships arrives at the shore so the this landing platform uh, is provided by the valves right so they run from the uh, from the land area to the c right and uh, here uh, a small uh, the the depth of water is so such that that the ship remains afloat okay uh, so the location of the or the extent of the valves is such that that sufficient amount of water 
should be there by the sea shore so that the ship can still remain afloat okay so these wharves wharves are the landing platforms that are necessary for the ships to come close enough to the shore for the purpose of embankment or disembankment at the same time embankment means like the ship will come uh, and will park here right to talk in terms of cars like the the ship will park here right embankment means parking disembankment means like ship after loading or loading the ship may again follow this route okay so here the extent of the wall should be such that that sufficient amount of uh, depth of water should be there so that ship can be uh, remain af afloat right and this such kind of platform is what we call as the wharves they run from the sea shore to the sea okay depending upon the availability this can be parallel to the ship uh, sea shore this can be uh, perpendicular to the ship shore can be considered at right angle or the oblique uh, angle to the sea shore right and more or less these are like wooden structures okay now in case we have uh, the same walls are constructed in a much more uh, sophisticated way that is we have used uh, uh, concrete uh, for the design and uh, we have um, like much more uh, facilities available for the arrangement of embankment and disembankment of, of the ship then the same wharf will be called as quay okay so quay and wharves are same but quay is more sophisticated than wharves all right so both are same the idea is same the purpose is same the quay will also run from the sea shore to 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 the sea to a certain uh, depth that will keep the ship afloat and will be used for embankment and disembankment uh, of of the of, of the ship right but if there is a much more sophistication during the construction then that structure is what we call as the quay example from the example you can very well see here right you can see the difference this is your valve and this is your quay right so a quay is a stone or a metal platform laying alongside or projecting into the water where ships are moved for uh, for loading and unloading same thing same thing same as valves right but here you can see the sophistication of the design okay so of course uh, when when we are going for the sophistication in design there are number of factors that are uh, constructed uh, considered we have foundation characteristics we have buoyancy soil pressure dead load or shape cargo etc all these parameters are con are considered for quays okay and of course uh, not to mention um, in quays in general a huge amount of cargo and uh, huge amount of ships arise right compared to the wharves right compared to the wharves huge amount of ships uh, arrives but it may happen that uh, uh, there may be a location where uh, we, where the facilities are not that av much available so we have uh, we don't have any option but to construct a wharves okay so it depends next is what we call as the jetties okay the next structure that we are going to discuss is what we call as the jetties and jetties are again a structure that runs from sea shore to the sea okay your quays and wharves also run from sea shore to sea your jetties also run from sea shore to sea right but the purpose is totally different the purpose of jetties is that it diverts the current away from the river bank right we have we have sea shore or the river bank right this is the river right so through jetties the purpose of jetties is that it diverts the water or, or the sea current from the sea shore it diverts the sea current from the sea shore thus protecting the banks right it uh, it avoids the scoring of the sea shore okay so the purpose of jetties is to divert the current away from the river bank it in case river is used from the oceans or from the sea shore okay depending upon case to case right on all it protects the bank 
from scoring okay while here the purpose of uh, valves valves and coils was for providing uh, a facility to embankment and disembankment of the ship okay this is an example of jetties you can see they run from the uh, from the land to the sea they are piled structures right they are piled structures again uh, the form of construction can depend upon the availability of, of facilities the profit uh, uh, like cost benefit ratio economics and like that right so it can be made up of concrete it can be made up of wooden piles and likewise okay so the idea is these piles will divert or or will reduce the intensity with which the water is, is striking the seashore thus uh, uh, avoiding the scoring phenomena and as well as act as a pathway for the movement of the passengers okay so these are your jetties right so your sea jetties are placed where harbor entrance is affected by drift and where she is shallow for a longer distance it extends from shore to the deep sea to receive the shape okay and these are exposed to severe uh, wave actions and so the, like the structural design is quite similar to that of the breakwater but since scoring phenomena they prevent so many times they uh, the design standards may be higher in some cases all right so these are your jetties and then at last we have fenders all right fenders are nothing but the cushions which are provided on the face of jetties for ship to come in contact these are what we call as the fenders right so fenders uh, when a ship comes so in order to break the movement uh, of the ship right and it uh, to ensure that it comes uh, ashore in a very safe manner we provide the fenders so these are what we call as the fenders fenders are nothing but the cushions that uh, uh, that are provided so that ship can come in contact and the the neither ship nor the uh, these jetties get affected by the ship all right so this is your fenders okay so these are some of the technical terms that are related to uh, harbor engineering okay so if you have watched till the end so i think the like you found the le lecture useful so do like the video right do like the video and uh, post your views in the uh, comment section and subscribe to the channel for uh, more videos like this and do check out our other play our other lectures on civil engineering topics right and if you find it useful like do consider all these things okay and uh, you can press the bell icon for our regular notification all right thank you for watching uh, have a nice day